Should you be worried about being bitten by kissing bugs and contracting a terrible disease? It depends on where you live. Some kissing bugs are capable of spreading Chagas disease, also known as American trypanosomiasis. Kissing bugs are so-called because they bite around the mouth and the eyes where the skin is thin. It is estimated that more than 6.5 million people in Latin America have Chagas disease. However, there is a huge disparity between the trypanosomiasis problem in Central and South America versus the one in North America. Although the disease has been found in North America, contracting it here is much rarer. A few years ago, kissing bugs in the United States and what they were capable of was all the rage in the news media. However, many news agencies failed to report all the facts. It was fear-mongering, and it was irresponsible. A lot of news organizations said the kissing bug has made its way to the United States from South America. Oh no! But in reality, there have been kissing bugs in the United States for a long, long time. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that, although there are triatamine bugs in the United States, only a few cases of Chagas disease from contact with the insects has been documented in this country. That is to say that only a few people have contracted the disease while in the United States. Although there are an estimated 300,000 people in this country living with the disease, maybe more, nearly all were infected in parts of Latin America where the disease is prevalent. However, through email, I spoke with Dr. Melissa Nolan, Assistant Professor of Epidemiology in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at Arnold School of Public Health, University of South Carolina, and she believes the number of cases acquired in the United States to be higher. She said, We published an article that details 76 cases of confirmed USA-acquired Chagas disease. All of these persons had supportive exposures in the USA and had never left the country. Some had never left their hometown. Additionally, this recent article published in the CDC's medical journal highlights that 10,000 Americans are likely infected locally with Chagas disease but have never been diagnosed. Dr. Nolan said, It's very likely the CDC's website material is outdated, especially since so many people were pulled from their normal jobs to man the pandemic response efforts. I will link the articles in the description. Now, I reached out to the CDC to ask if it's possible that there are 76 cases of confirmed USA-acquired Chagas disease, and if it's possible that there may be an estimated 10,000 prevalent cases of locally acquired T. cruzi infection. Locally acquired as in here in the United States. I was contacted by someone at the CDC who said she would direct my questions to where they need to go and get back to me. It's been about a week, so I decided to go ahead and make this video, and I will make an update video when someone gets back to me. The name kissing bug often strikes fear in people. And in Latin America, that is understandable. However, in the United States, there's really no need to spend time worrying about these insects. Now, I'm not saying that these bugs in this country are harmless. It's just that the threat they pose in North America is not nearly as great as it is in Latin America. And let me explain why. I'll get into it thoroughly, but let's just say the kissing bugs in Chagas endemic areas have a certain behavior that helps spread the disease. There are 11 kissing bug species in the United States and Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona have the widest species diversity. Here are the 11 species. For this video, I'm featuring the Eastern Blood-Sucking Cone Nose, Triatoma sanguisuga. It is an assassin bug and it belongs to the subfamily Triatomini, also known as kissing bugs. Now, when I say don't worry too much, I'm not saying that it's okay to mishandle these bugs or allow them to populate your home, which is also rare in this country. A parasite known as Trypanosoma cruzi causes Chagas disease. Chagas disease can occur in people, dogs, and wild animals. The Trypanosoma cruzi parasite is also called T. cruzi. According to the CDC, it is important to note that not all triatamine bugs are infected with the parasite that causes Chagas disease. It is estimated that in the United States, about 50% of kissing bugs carry the parasite. However, the CDC also reports that the likelihood of getting T. cruzi infection from a triatamine bug in the United States is low, even if the bug is infected, and I'll tell you why. There is more than one triatamine species that act as vectors for Chagas disease in Central and South America, but one of the main carriers of the parasite in Chagas endemic areas is the species Triatoma infestans. Assassin bugs can be beneficial as they eat other insects that some people consider pests. However, whereas most assassin bugs eat insects and spiders, the eastern blood-sucking cone nose requires blood meals to survive and reproduce. 
So, they feed on warm-blooded animals, and this is where the problem occurs between them and humans. However, people don't get Chagas disease from the bite of a cone nose bug. Where the disease is prevalent, the bugs often defecate near the bite site. Then, a person scratches the site and feces infected with the parasite T. cruzi gets into the bloodstream of the victim. Again, the main carrier of the parasite in Chagas endemic areas is the species Triatoma infestans, which exhibits that very behavior. The eastern blood-sucking cone nose, Triatoma singosuga, does not defecate while feeding. It is probably one reason why trypanosomiasis is not a bigger problem in the United States. And indeed, entomologists at the University of Florida report that the threat of American trypanosomiasis in the U.S. is low due to two important reasons. One being that there is not a large concentrated population of infected individuals in North America like there is in South America. The second being the trianamine vectors in the U.S. do not defecate on their hosts immediately after feeding, which is crucial for transmission of the pathogen. I would think the latter is the more important of the two. Researchers attribute the low incidence of Chagas disease in the continental United States to not only poor efficacy of the protozoan transmission by the bugs, but also the infrequent human contact and poor ability of the bugs to permanently colonize homes. Good sanitation and tight building construction tends to limit cone nose bug infestations. Chagas disease thrives in impoverished villages, places where they have mud walls and thatched roofs are common. Kissing bugs feed at night and they can easily enter poorly constructed dwellings. Now, I was curious. If the triatomine bugs in the United States do not exhibit the same behavior as the species in Chagas endemic areas, then how is the disease being locally acquired? I once again reached out to Dr. Nolan and she said that one of the 11 species in the U.S., this one, which I don't even, which I can't even, this one, she said, I think this species is attributable to most locally acquired cases in the USA as it predominantly occurs in Texas. Residents in other areas of the USA likely had excessive exposure and one time the infection stuck. Otherwise, I think we see less infection due to triatomines in the USA having parasitic mites living on them. I theorize the presence of these mites lowers triatomine fitness. Still trying for funding to confirm that theory, no luck yet. The adult eastern blood-sucking cone nose is nearly an inch in length and is a true bug. It is mostly black with reddish-orange coloring on various parts of the body. The abdomen has six reddish-orange spots on each side. The head is elongated and cone-shaped, hence the name. The eastern blood-sucking cone nose's range includes much of the eastern half of the United States from Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas east to New Jersey and Florida. Hosts include wild animals, dogs, livestock, and humans. Wild animals include rats, raccoons, bats, foxes, armadillos, coyotes, mice, skunks, wood rats, etc. While most bites from assassin bugs can be quite painful, the bite from this bug is painless. The reason being that they first inject a saliva that has an anesthetic property. Most people don't know they've been bitten until they wake up and notice an itchy red spot on their skin. The eastern blood-sucking cone nose typically feeds at night and is attracted to artificial lights. If lights are located near the openings of homes, such as doors, one might get in occasionally. If you find a cone nose in your home, work, car, etc., don't smash it lest you expose yourself to the parasite or smear it onto a surface. I would avoid touching the insect and relocate it to the outside using some sort of container. However, researchers at Texas A&M University have a community science project and ask that if you think you have found a kissing bug in or around your home, kennel, yard, or other area, please reach out to them. I put a link in the description below. In conclusion, it appears the real threat of acquiring the T. cruzi infection from kissing bugs in the United States comes from this triatomine species, and this is the area where this species is found. If you go camping, I would advise not sleeping out under the stars, but staying in a well-sealed tent or other structure. In addition, making sure your home is well-sealed to prevent insect invasion is also a good idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more videos about all things nature. Thank you.